Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're on a Derbyshire hillside looking at shiny new rifles. In Hello Charlie, Lord of the Ferrets, Simon Whitehead announces a CLA DVD giveaway. We have news, we have hunting YouTube first. They said it would never happen, but for one night only, we bring you the Windsor and Crow Show. is going to start sounding like a London taxi driver. Here you will never get who I had in the back of my hide today. In fact, he has two guests along for a ride in the hide. Clay Sport Supremo Mark Range Rover Windsor and the father of a young Clay Sport Supremo, Dave, who's the Brody Woolard. The abuse starts early. He did turn up in his shell suit. Shot. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. That coaching's definitely working. It is, isn't it? It is, yeah. Thanks Left and right, that, no problem. It's good to see that he's taking all the coaching I've given him on board. That was one thing I didn't want to say on camera, that I've seen him closing both eyes. Watching him running down there, he runs like a girl, doesn't he? Uh, he Have you seen it? Up, he, is that what he's doing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wait till you see Mr Woolard's teeth, they're white. He's saying I'm fat. Yeah, I feel that one. He's had his teeth whitened and he's had a slight tan. Yeah, I could give him a few tips on a tan. We're not sure who's teaching who, what, or if at all, or whether any of them has had a spray tan or teeth whitened. To the pigeons, Crow had a feeling the recently harvested rape crop would deliver some sport, so pushed the button on Mark and Dave coming down south. It was helped by Crow seeing really strong pigeon numbers. There's a lot of pigeons about. I've probably got several thousand just on my little farm here. Being on the rapes, that was a good way of getting hold of them um, and dropping them and picking them before they get onto the peas. Well, the peas is just the other side of the hedge, so but, um, yeah, it's working well. But they've, they've been targeting everything. Mark was keen to take Andy up on the offer as he hasn't had a day on the non-clay variety of pigeons for two years. I just haven't had the time. I know you can make time for pigeon shooting, but it's a bit hard at weekends. You know, competition season at the minute is a bit difficult. Um, but fortunately, this Saturday landed on a day that I'm not busy, so... Mark has had a great year, but what was the highlight? Shooting this pigeon. Oh, oh man, look, look at that. that. Watch your heads. That'd be the highlight of the year, I thought. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> I, said, no, I, so, I said the highlight before you shot it. Oh, man. I didn't want to miss that. No, I bet you didn't. Now, obviously, the highlight of the year, of course, has got to be the Stratton winning the Range Rover. It could, I mean, I've had a fantastic year. That there's been seven or eight moments, special moments, but the Stratton is just in a class of its own, you know. So that's definitely the highlight of the year. Now, after that shot, the birds wasn't as high as that either. <laughs> and the highlight of the highlight? It has to be the heated massage seats. Got to be. I think I've, uh, I've only used the car a few times, keeping it new, but I've definitely worn out the massage seats so far, and Rachel has as well, to be fair. No, I haven't. What, a Rachel or a massage seat? You don't want a Rachel, she's hard work. I'll bet she's, I'll bet she's, <laughs> bet she's expensive. She's not, no, she's, no, she's not. Girl. She's not, she's all right, yeah. When she behaves herself, it's all right. Dangerous territory. Moving on quickly, let's talk pigeons. It's obvious from Mark's custom engraved creek off that he's a sporting man. So does shooting the woodies disrupt his season? There are people out there that use different methods for, for, for game shooting. I use the same method for everything, really. So I think if you, uh, if you perfect one, it'll work well for everything. Unlike Andy, he's still trying to perfect his at the minute. We're working on it, though, mate, aren't we? We are, we are yeah. We're not quite there yet, but we're, I think couple of days we'll, we'll be right. Mark is very like Mr Digweed in that respect. It's not unheard of for people to think that they should shoot different quarry in different ways, but it shouldn't make any difference. Andy has given Mark a good spot on the corner of the rape field with a pea crop behind. The birds are coming from all directions and different heights. 
We film some of them in slow-mo, but this bird is so high it takes 50-5-0 seconds from strike to hitting the deck, so we've speeded it up. Mark is a sponsored game board shot and is using a mixture of black gold and dark storm cartridges for today's shooting. Some 30, 32 gram six dark storms um, and I've got some 35 gram five black golds. Um, so a bit of a mixture really. Um, no, no real reason for the mixture, just the fact that they're black gold and I like to test a few different ones here and there. I've also got some home loads as well um, that are all game board components. What do you shoot competitively anyway? Competitively, uh, what my clay loads. Yeah, yeah. I use the 28 gram black gold um, eights and seven and a halves, and some dark storm six and a halves. Um, just for different ranges, you know, when you've got different, when you have different ranges, you need a different size pellet for, you know, an eight for a close range, seven and a half for an intermediate range, and a six and a half for a. And I'd use a six and a half for something a little bit range, you know, a little bit of a heavier pellet just to break them targets a bit better. But anything belly on, I mean, through my parkours, my Krieg of parkours, it's three quarter and full choke. So anything belly on up to 50, 60 yard, I'll be running a 28 gram eight through it. So there's no, uh, there's no difference really if you use a seven and a half or an eight within that 30, 40 yards range, you know, it will break the target just the same. But when you get out to these 60, 70 yards, you need to up that pellet size, you know, just for that heavier energy down range. So it's always common sense to have uh, some different loads in your bag. As we've already touched on, Mark's gun is very personal, with game scenes, a swallow to celebrate the support given to him by his grandfather, and of course, his other half, Rachel Carey. This is my, yeah, this is my competition gun, as well as my hunting gun. Um, I've, had it for, I've had it for a couple of years, uh, I think about two and a half years now. When it first arrived, it was a bit of a, uh, a toy to me, because I was shooting my Super Sport, which is basically the same gun, but with a different setup um, in terms of barrel and stock. And then I, I, got, I got it out of the cupboard one day, decided to take it to the English Open, which was at Southdown. Hit the nail on the head with it, really, because I shot a 98 and won the 98 out of 100 and won the English Open. I think it's probably the best, the best Krieg off I've shot, and I've had four of them. Obviously, this is my fourth one, and it will probably be the one that, that stays with me for the rest of uh, my career, really, as long as it lasts, as long as I don't wear it out. <laughs> Love my hunting, so it's got a wild ball on the side, and obviously, my lovely lady on the bottom. So it's a very personal gun to me, really. Very personal gun. It has its days, I tell it off, I usually blame Rachel on the bottom when it goes wrong. And he suggests he lets Mark crack on and shifts to try and intercept the pigeons homing in on the peas from a different direction. It's an excuse for him to cover the hide using his new personalised 18 inch Gerber machete courtesy of UK Shoot Warehouse. I'm not one of these people that brags about their chopper but that is one hell of a chopper. Kelder. UK Shoot Warehouse now are uh, doing Gerber stuff and uh, she sent me this uh, machete for hide making. She's kindly had my name put on it, which is nice. But I'll tell you, it, she sent me a uh, gutting knife as well and that is, oh, that's like a razor. It really is. It's good stuff. Gerber stuff is good stuff anyway, but um, yeah, it's, an, it's nice. That's what I'll cut these hide bits with. But no, it's just a job. Anything you've got to watch, don't chop your leg off. There's a strong possibility that large swathes of woodland could now be under threat, plus the threat of him doing himself a mischief, waving that great length under other people's noses. Could have had Mark's eye out. Crow doesn't stick it here for long. Instead, the host with the most drives up to check on Dave Willard, father of promising young shot Brody, who is on a cruise. Dave's previous pigeon shooting best was 88 birds. When we rock up, his clicker suggests he's doing rather better than that. I've got the boy coming down. He, yeah. he ain't going to be happy that you've shot, <laughs> shot most of his pigeons. No, we were fuming then when he knew that I was coming. But yeah. He's out on his cruise somewhere. Well, that's right, well, <laughs> 10 you got, mate. Oh, no. Sure. Looks like I've been at sea for a week. It does. <laughs> yeah, it does quite some time. Uh, it left me with no water or nothing. Oh right, yeah. yeah. I tell you what, you, you make Mark look white and he's had a, <laughs> and he's had a spray tan. Brody may have missed out on this opportunity, but Crow is taking him under his wing during the school holidays for a bit of sport. Yeah, Brody's going to come down and stay for a week and uh, going to come out rabbiting and uh, uh, the deer will be in season then, so hopefully. Um, well, deer permit, he, he might even get himself a deer, so uh, don't put that out because I was expect to get one cut. 
As Crow packs up, the boys are still banging away. Dave finishes on about 150 and Mark gets over 200 with Crow landing about 40. Empty, you see. And he got one kill for 25. I enjoy taking people like that out, that, like David and uh, Mark, that they do appreciate it. Mark hasn't been, like he said earlier, he hasn't been for about two years now, so it showed start when he started off, he was a bit rusty. He got the first one and got all excited and, and uh, he's down there still banging away. Yeah, he got all excited and had a few misses, but I'll put him straight in the end. Dave, best days ever had his 80, so my ambition was today to get him over 100, so I don't know how many marks got, he's uh, been shooting really well, so he's probably, he must be close on 200, I think, if not more. Myself, I don't know. 40, 45, but uh, I'm really taking it that serious day. My ambition was, like I say, to get these old boys a, a good day, sir, and they've got it, sir. It's hard to believe that this is the first time Andy and Mark have actually met, and Andy's only known Dave for a few months. But they have now had a day's sport together that they will talk about for years to come, and Brodie and Rachel will be really cheesed off. Well done to Mark and Dave, and thank you to our own Mr Crow, who will be at the CLA Game Fair this weekend on various stands, including UK Shoot, Warehouse and Sporting Shooter, as will lots of others. Roger Late, Jamie Chandler, Darren, me and this next bloke from Top Shots to Bottom Feeders. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The annual Festival of Hunting has been held in Peterborough. It's a showcase for hunting and hounds, inter-hunt relays and the popular Tumblers Club photography competition, which shows people out fox hunting falling off their horses in flamboyant manner. Among runners-up is Mark Gilbert, master with the Burn Bloodhounds, but winner is 10-year-old Tom Wisby out hunting on his pony. To see all the entries, go to festivalofhunting.com. Big Game Hunters have applauded South African Airways for lifting its ban on transporting animal trophies. The airline introduced the ban in April after being fined for a trophy shipment that made its way to Australia under the label Mechanical Equipment. Inexplicably, Anti said this would lead to a rise in rhino poaching. George Digweed has won his 26th world title. His latest achievement was in the FITASC World Championships in Minnesota, Cheryl Hall won the women's title. The Crown Prosecution Service has dropped yet another case against a hunt. Antis provided the CPS with video they said showed the East Kent hunt hunting foxes. But all charges have been discounted by the court and the group will not face any further criminal proceedings. The East Kent Hunt Saboteurs Association says it plans to react with what it calls direct action. An Australian sheep farmer has had a bumper few weeks on the foxes. Glenn Stuckbury hung 160 foxes on a fence, which he shot over 10 weeks to make people aware of the sheer number of animals out to get his lambs. He says the figure has more than doubled in the last 20 years. Meanwhile, Australia's anti-hunting environment minister is under attack from Bridget Bardot over his treatment of cats. The French actress and animal rights campaigner wrote to Greg Hunt over his policy to wipe out two million feral cats. She called it animal genocide. However, feral cats kill an estimated 75 million Australian native animals every day. So sympathy is with Hunt's first pro-hunting policy. The maker of this video shot and trapped 200 cats on 800 acres in 12 months. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, hello, Charlie, and look out for Simon Chuckle Brother Whitehead. Hello, Charlie. Well, here we are, rabbit shooting, air rifles out, ferrets at home all asleep. So what I'm doing is we'll have a little cheeky Whitehead smile here, because don't forget, CLA Game Fair, Pugs and Drummers Stand, Run Rabbit Run, a rabbit's tail. Special offer. To anybody that comes up to me and says at the game fair they've seen as Hello Charlie, I will knock a fiver or this so they can have it for 15 quid. Hi Charlie, Mark Yaler here on a holiday in Maine at Cabela's. Hey Charlie, hope you're well. 
doesn't take too much to figure out where I've been spending my morning and it's been reasonably productive even though it just didn't go the way I wanted it but that's hunting for you so it's a bargain so don't forget run rabbit run hello Charlie Tom in Fairbanks Alaska just giving you a hello Charlie Go on. just getting the dog uh, all uh, ready for the fall upland season here in Alaska and uh, hopefully I'll have some uh, footage for you hello Charlie hello Charlie Michael and Carl here on the crows with a 410 and the 12 gauge I'm winning lucky <laughs> sod hello Charlie Alan here from Ireland just out doing a bit of pigeon decay 51 pigeons and three crows keep up the good work lad Hello Charlie, Mr. from Anman here. Hello Charlie, Stephen here. We're out at uh, shooting some pigeons and crows on some winter barley. 13 in the bag so far, really happy, so. Hello Charlie, this is Hunter Ready, out here uh, doing a little bit of stalking, as you can see I've got myself a nice roebuck. See you later at the weekend, hopefully see uh, you guys and a few of your viewers there. Au revoir. That's it, please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. A fiver, that is going to hurt Mr. Whitehead. You can see more of Simon and Darren in this week's Airheads out on Thursday. Next up, Browning bring together a bunch of gamekeepers to try out their rifles. If you are teetering on deciding whether to be a member of the National Gamekeepers Organization, maybe this will push you over the edge. It's a hillside in Derbyshire. And Browning has brought a range of its new rifles for NGO members to try for free with free food. Well, we have a tent on the hillside and we have two tents actually. And we have a lovely selection of Browning uh, rifles and Winchester ammunition. And we obviously partner the NGO, the official rifle partner of the NGO. So we thought it'd be fun to come out and um, show some of the members the new products and uh, they can have a try and um, seems to be going quite well. The 2-2 is uh, very fun actually, we've got a, a 300 yard target, obviously we wouldn't uh, advocate anyone shooting anything, at, or trying to shoot anything at 300 yards with a 2-2, but it's just a little bit of fun. Uh, obviously effective killing range of a 2-2 up to about 100 yards, so three times the normal distance that you would expect to use that product, so it's been good fun. Now uh, you're saying that the slight edge side, if I may say, because only one person's hit the target. Only one person, and uh, that was actually me, but uh, I'm sure it was absolute fluke, I haven't managed to hit it since. <laughs> <laughs> but we have um, uh, the GRS, Xbox GRS rifle here, which is fantastic. It's a, a heavy barrel, um, sort of customizable stock. Uh, we have the new Xbox Eclipse, which is a thumb hole laminate Xbox, which is lovely. And we have the standard Xbox um, composite stainless stalker. So it's a, a nice selection of four or five different rifles. So, what do the punters think of it? The Browning, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're speaking as a ticker owner? Yes, I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I certainly am, yeah, yeah. The day is taking place at Calton Moor Range, which has miles and miles of Derbyshire moorland to play with, and for the Wombles amongst us, an underground range for fine tuning that zero. Owner Mike Dickinson also has a guilty secret a rather lovely new rifle in his shop that is not remotely a Browning. It's a side-by-side -side 600 Nitro, made for a, a client in the north of England. Um, Trevor Proctor is actually making it. It's going to be the last one he's going to make before he retires. And it's still a fair way off being finished yet. But it's coming on in leaps and bounds. You don't realise, but just seeing it every day, how much it is coming on. Have it's you, totally in the light yet. Have you, heard, have you been able to use it yet? No, not been. It's, it's been fired in proof, but we've... We're not even tempted to fire, we won't get around to regulating it for oh, another couple of months yet. So the next, next stage is um, polish it all up, finish all the pins and screws and then it can go to the engravers. Um, once it's back from the engravers and then it will go for colour hardening. Back from colour hardening then we'll checker it and finish the woodwork and final finishes and then black all the furniture and black all the barrels and regulate it. Um, we normally regulate these at about 25 yards. 
That's the expected range. That's the expected range to be using it. Dare I ask how much? And lots of knots, that's all I'm saying. To, to the nearest 10. <laughs> to the nearest 10, uh, probably about 70. It's very, very pretty gun. Um, it's left handed. It's left handed. Yeah, all proper guns should be left handed. There's <laughs> <laughs> the left hander. For more about Mike's range and shop, go to keltonmoorrange.com. For the NGO, go to nationalgamekeepers.org.uk. And to ogle the latest Browning rifles, visit browning.eu. From the Peak District to the Peak of YouTube, perfection it is, Hudging YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's start with a film to make you feel uncomfortable. Felu has a camera on the crow he shoots. Now, it could be a cleverly cut together piece, stunted up with a drone, but it looks very, very real. And you are feeling uncomfortable because you know he must have caught the crow to fit the camera. This is canned crow hunting, but then it's pest control. Or is it? And is it sporting? Comments below, please. Back to more traditional hunting films, YouTube is great for seeing how people do what I do, but in different countries. Here the Clark boys are up at their uncle's farm for a Kiwi-style pheasant drive. Eight of them and dogs, including a characterful pup called Tilly. Stuck in the rut is riding up into the hills on mules and looking for woodland mule deer by finding their tracks and following them. Lots for me to learn here. It's promo time! Spring roebuck hunting in agricultural areas is the short version of a 75-minute film made by the excellent Peter Novak. Meanwhile, the Foul Life Season 7 Episode 5 trailer has banded nation, leaving Texas and heading to the West Coast to hook up with rock Merlot from Merlot Waterfowl in the Butte Sink of California. On to pigs and DNA Hog Hunter is out on the river in what he says is his hardest hunt ever. It is Miguel's second feral hog hunt and it involves plenty of clay and mud. Lucky Texas gets all the most prolific hog hunting, maybe it's the way Texans do it. The Hog Zone is back with a proper feral pig episode. And finally some Iberian beauty. This is the story of a lucky hunter who manages to achieve the Spanish Ibex Grand Slam in just four days. The trip is beautifully organised by sporting agents Salva Monforte. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportchannel.tv. If you don't like those, how about this? It's Schools Challenge TV and in this week we're finding out how glasses can help you shoot, but not just any glasses. These are specially provided by Keith Holland and Associates, specialist shooting glasses providers, plus a piece of kit that helps shooters and golfers with their hand-to-eye coordination. There's Schools Challenge TV news, there's a preview of the CLA Game Fair, and there's the results of the monthly sporting shooter competition. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, please like, please leave a rude comment below. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, good game fairing and goodbye.